It's been 18 months, but we're back with eight exciting new trail bikes to put through their paces. Yes, it's the 2022 MBR Trail Bike of the Year test. Once again, we've split the contenders into two categories, with shop-bought bikes on one side and direct sales brands on the other. And in this video, we're gonna be shining our spotlight on the shop-bought models. So to bring you all of the insight after weeks of exhaustive testing, we have Paul Burwell. So Paul, what have we got here? We'll start with the most expensive bike, which is the Specialized Stumpy Evo Comp. It's 4,000 pounds. It's got full carbon frame set, 160 mil fork, 150 mil rear travel. Comes in six sizes, adjustable geometry, impressive trail bike. Pretty sweet looking package. Indeed, yeah. Right, the next bike is the Nuke Proof Reactor. It's 3699. Aluminium with a carbon rear stay. It's 140 fork, 130 back end. Yep, and that's the 29 inch wheel version, basically of the bike that won the test a couple of years ago, it isn't it? Is Which indeed. was the carbon version, this is the alloy one. Yeah, yep. there's also a 27 and a half, similar build, similar spec to this bike as well. Sounds good. Right, so next up, I think we've got the white, haven't we? Yeah, white T160 RS. It's £3,600 on the money. Full aluminium, 160mm fork, 150mm back end. Okay, close to the specialised in numbers then. Almost identical. If you look, at, I've got a spec sheet in my pocket and all, there's so many numbers are, are exactly the same. Well, that's going to be a close one then. It is, yeah. So last but not least, we've got Focus. Right, this is the Focus Jam 6.9. Cheapest bike in test at 3199. Comes with a full aluminium frame set, 150mm travel front and rear. And a full XT group set by the looks yeah, of it. Yeah, it's really good, really good bike. So obviously when we talk about trail bikes, that's a really broad remit of bikes, isn't it? It's like- Correct, yeah. So how do we narrow that down to focus on this? Um, well, there's a few basic requirements. I mean, all the bikes have got 29er wheels. All of the bikes have got 140, 160 forks. They've got 130 to 150 back ends. They've all got adjustable geometry. They've all got drop posts. They've all got similar tire spec, similar builds, and the geometry is really similar across all four bikes. Yeah. So that's a little bit of an overview. Now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty. So, the Focus Jam, that's a brand new design launched this year, isn't it, I think? Yeah, it's got new fold suspension. That's a, a single pivot, isn't it, with a linkage actuated shock? Yeah, they changed the dynamics of the suspension and it's quite an, an open suspension, it's quite active suspension. One of the little issues we had with it, it's a bit wallowy when you're pedaling sometimes, but the suspension is really dynamic. I mean, when you're flying down the track, it's really sort of, you know, it responds good to, you know, undulations and bumps, it's great. Yeah, so it was, a, it was a really good fun bike downhill, wasn't it? But um, how did that impact on the climbing performance? Well, it's the heaviest bike on test by quite a good way. I mean, it's 16.4 kilograms. Plus it has a max grip front tire and it's really draggy. And also it's got really heavy wheels. So it just doesn't have that pace on the climbs like the other bikes. So you've got to use the pro pedal lever on a, on a shock almost on every single climb. Yeah. But there was a problem with that, wasn't there? A small problem with it. Well, the problem is with it, it's got such a light preload on the lever that if you catch a shorts on it, it knocks it closed, which is okay for climbing, but it means that when you're descending, it suddenly locks the yeah, suspension you, out. You sort of caught, lean it over in a corner and you can knock it with your knee yeah, pad or something and it, and it, it goes into close. It just needs yep. a little bit more preload on that lever, that's the only thing. Yeah, another unique aspect of this, um, what, that stem, we've got to talk about that, haven't we? We are going to talk about that because one of the things about, you're probably able to see from this bike, it's really clean. All of the cables are rooted internally, but they're rooted internally from the stem. So they go into the stem, down past the steerer, then into the frame set. Focus don't offer this stem in any other length. Okay. So this is it. If you want to fit a different stem, a different brand, for example, you're going to have to take all of the cables out of the frame and fit a... Different top cap, isn't it? Yeah, a different Across, cap there. And, yep. it, and basically it has some holes in it for the cables. But what that means is you're going to have to re-bleed the rear brake. 
you're going to have to route all the rear derailleur cable and you know, the drop-off It's not cable. a simple job, is it? It's not. And even if you want to do something like if you just want to put the stem up and down, for example, with this system, it has these shaped washers. So if you just want to drop it down, you take one of these shaped washers out, which is great, but you can't put it on the top of the stem. You have to use a round washer, which sort of spoils the overall aesthetic of the bike. You know, yeah. what Focus went out of the way to do here is sort of spoiled a bit at the top. Yeah, a bit inconvenient if you want to start messing around with your cockpit. But to be fair, at like 3.2, it's got a really good spec, hasn't it? Oh yeah, it's got pretty much a full XT group set, which yeah. is really good. I mean, the brakes are good, shifting's really crisp, crank set, really stiff, good quality bottom bracket. This is a shop-bought bike, but it's almost direct sales pricing. It is indeed. Almost. Only little issue with the brakes we had was we had a little bit of rattle from the pads in the calipers. And the XT brakes, sometimes they pull to the bar a little bit, you know, just a little bit of just inconsistency. Thing, yeah. 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 So what uh, rating did this bike get? It got an eight. Just a couple of things. It was just that extra weight, that pedaling wasn't as great as the other bikes. But in terms of actually ripping downhill, like in terms of riding it, fast it was just almost as quick as every other bike on test cool well let's move on to the next bike okay so 18 months ago this bike won the test how did it do this time joint second position and to be fair to it, it's kind of a little bit undergunned compared to the other bikes isn't it yeah just a little bit less travel Slightly steeper geometry, slightly steeper head angle. I mean, when we say slightly steeper, it's actually almost two degrees steeper than most of the bikes, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. I mean, it does have a geometry just on a bike. It has this rail and trail yeah. geometry just feature. Allows you to lower the BB, slacken the head angle. But when we did that, it's actually the measurements correspond to the standard settings. So there was a, there was a little bit of a anomaly there. I don't know why that was the case. So it had a shorter travel trail feel than the other bikes, maybe? Yeah, it definitely it wasn't as capable when you were really like hammering downhill, but in tight, twisty, single track, it was almost the quickest bike. It was, it was more the sort of steeper tracks where it started to sort of feel a little bit overwhelmed, didn't it? But actually in, on rough stuff, it was amazing, wasn't it? The rear suspension's really yeah. good. I mean, it was super plush, super like grippy. One of the reason suspension feels so good is because the frame has a nice compliance. It has these cam fibre seat stays that have a nice ride feel. Yeah, I, I'd agree. The frame felt quite soft, didn't it? So that if you, if you got in a really kind of rutted track, you didn't feel like the bike was just, you know, trying to spit you out. You could, it would actually work with the terrain. It felt really nice, didn't it? Yeah, some bikes you get on them and are really, really stiff, you know, really responsive. But when you're in those situations, that's not a good thing. It can get like, it, the, you know, the wheels can get knocked around and it, you know, this bike just felt amazingly comfortable, you know, really sure footed in those conditions. And one thing Nukeproof do is they put the high end shock on, on all the bikes, don't they? So you know you're going to get the suspension performance of the, yeah, the top end Yeah, it doesn't matter models. how much you spend on one of these bikes, it has this shock on. So you just, the suspension performance is the same. What was the shock? So it's a RockShox Super Deluxe Select Plus. Okay. So we've got a little bit of a split with the, with the travel and stuff. So, so really this bike is kind of aimed at a slightly different sort of rider to maybe some of the other bikes in the test, isn't it? Yeah, I would say this is like your traditional trail rider. If you want a bike that you just ride in trails, just ride in single track, and you're not looking for something that you want to do a bit of enduro or an uplift. I mean, you could do uplift, you could do all those things on this bike. That's not a problem. But the other bikes are a bit more capable they're more suited to that sort of riding, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Whereas this comes alive on the slightly flatter trails. Yeah. And some of the others maybe feel like they're, you know, they're half asleep. Yeah, and, and I think what it is, it's just bikes have moved on in the last 18 months since we did that test. And I, I think it's just those bikes, you can just get a bit more aggressive on them. I know they're just a bit more dynamic in that regard, you know? The sizing is a little bit more constrictive on this, although not, not in terms of reach, but in terms of what frame sizes are offered. Yeah, there's it? only three frame sizes. Whereas the Focus, it's got four frame sizes and Specialized comes in six. So when you're on the margins of sizing, you know, there's not going to be a bike for you. Yeah. So it's still, even after 18 months, a brilliant bike, 
but things have moved on a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we say it moved on. We're not talking a massive difference. It's just small margins. Yeah. So this is called the T160. So does it have 160 mil travel? No, it has 150 mil of travel at the rear wheel, has a 160 mil fork. White just calls the bike after the fork travel, That's not the rear travel. Fair enough. And this was quite a different proposition to the other bike that was rated nine, which was the Newt Proof, wasn't it? Yeah, this is longer travel, more capable, has a similar reach, but slightly slacker, lower BB, bit more aggressive. Enduro trail. I would say so, yeah. So at the beginning you said all these bikes have got geometry adjusts. So where is it on this bike? On the frame it's got a shape it link which connects the shock to the, the lower link. And that geometry just you can just turn it upside down, lowers the BB, slack and set angle. Okay. It's pretty slack, isn't it, in the slack set? Yeah, it's something like 64.3 degrees or something like that. So it's, we got to a point where trail bikes are now like the averaged head angle is about 64 degrees. Yeah, apart from the nuke proof the three longer travel bikes are within like half a degree of each other. So what was the standout kind of ride quality on this bike? It was just really capable. Suspension, the suspension did need a bit of setting up, but I must admit we had to run a little bit less sag than we initially thought, just to make it pedal a little bit better. So what did we end up at? What was the sweet spot on this bike? So any rider, we would recommend something like 25, to 27% sag. Okay, and, and more than that, and it, and it just gets a, what, a bit wallowy or a bit bobby? Yeah, or... just the suspension's a bit too soft and it's a Doesn't bit- Doesn't pedal as good. No, when you're climbing, you notice a bit more suspension movement. Yeah. When you're trying to accelerate out of corner, it just takes a bit of winding up. Okay, but I guess then if you, you could run a little bit more sag if you were doing uplift, spike park stuff. Yeah, totally, if you didn't have to do any climbing, any really sort of pedally, if you're just using gravity as, as your friend, you can totally run it softer. Okay, we've got the, we've got the rear suspension set up in the end. How was the fork? The fork took a little bit more setting up and that's because it uses a Charger 2.1 RC damper, which has just a, a fixed high speed setting. And when you were descending sometimes, you could feel a little bit of harshness in your hands when you're really going through like a, I don't know, a really rough choppy section. So that, that's something potentially you could upgrade in the future, isn't it? Yeah, you can do that. What we've done is we fitted a, a charger damper from a, a Lyric Ultimate fork in this. And that's, that's a good upgrade, but it's a 200 quid upgrade. Yep. What you can do with the stock damper is you can actually send it off to be tuned mm -hmm. and you can run a lighter oil in that. And what I've actually done is I've sent this off to Sprung Suspension and they're gonna do a little modification to that. And that tune is only 40 pounds. Okay. That uh, 40 pounds, that's something you could do yourself. It's like, if you can feel that bit of harshness, you don't have to spend 200 quid on the boss damper. You just do that little modification. Just, it'll just help out. So were there any other criticisms about this bike? Um, only three sizes. Okay. It's fine if you're kind of in the average window, isn't it? Yeah, if you're average height or just a little bit, but if you're really tall, really short, you might have to do a little compromise on the sizing. I also think that one of the good things about this bike, it's got this bike yoke dropper post. Yep. And which is really an expensive dropper post. It's like a 300 quid dropper post. Whereas all the other bikes have got 150 pound dropper post. And I was thinking that 150 quid would pay for a slightly better, that upgrade in the fork. So maybe the money could be better spe spent elsewhere. Yeah, and I have a suspect that might change for next year's bike. And also maybe for a bike that's as capable as this, it could probably do with a chain guide as well, couldn't it? Yeah, it has the, the mounts for it. Again, that's like a 20 quid upgrade. Yeah. But it sort of should come as standard on a bike like this, I think. So what did you end up rating this? We gave it a nine, but really wanted to give it 9.5 because the difference in ride quality between this and Specialized is like that much difference. Splitting hairs. Yeah, indeed. Well, let's uh, move on to the special. Yeah. So this is the second generation of the Stump Jumper Evo. The last one we had on test a few years ago, but there were a few little issues we had with it, wasn't it? So have they changed those things for this bike? They've done more sizes for starters. 
There's six sizes. It's a big range. Yeah, but what's interesting about the six sizes is if you're average height, you can actually fit on three of them. The difference in head tube length and the difference in seat tube length is not as great as if you normally would have with say, small, medium, large. So you can choose by kind of reach and wheelbase rather and, than seat tube. And ride quality. Yeah. So say for example, you want a, a tighter, more maneuverable bike, you can buy the smaller size. Yep. If you want a big, more stable bike, you can buy the bigger size. Yeah, and we tested the S4 here, didn't we? Yeah. So the old, the old bike had a quite a short head tube, which kind of made like getting the right bar height tricky. It but, did, yeah. But quite a high seat tube. They've, they've kind of flipped that on its head now, haven't they? Yeah. It's a little, little bit taller. I mean, it has the slackest head angle on test, but the steeper seat angle, which yep. is good for descending and climbing. You have options, don't you? Yeah, you do. So in terms of adjusting the geometry, you can adjust the head angle, the BB height, the chainstay length, and you can also put a mullet link on, which you can put a 27 and a half inch back wheel, which also changes geometry. So there's a myriad of different things you can do to this bike, yeah. yeah. So what setting did uh, we run it in for this test? Well, we use the stock setting. This is the whole thing about this adjustable geometry, which actually, if you're confused about that, there's a, there's a web app at specialized.com where you can, you can just click on all of the different things it does. You can say, I want the slack head angle and it will show you all of the changes. But what's good about this bike, amazingly, if you just have the stock setting, it's really good. Yeah. So that was the, the middle head angle setting and the high short chain state setting, wasn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of almost the most traily. Well, you could go steeper at the head angle, but it's quite a traily setup, isn't it? Yeah. But the, you look at the numbers compared to the white, almost identical. Yeah, because obviously when the Stumpiva came out, it was this kind of this crazy progressive bike. Oh my God, how can you ride it sort of thing. But actually now everything's converged and it's kind of almost stock angles and, and measurements now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just like before you'd see these long, low slack bikes and the numbers would be like 63, 64 head angle. That'd be like downhill bike territory. But now it's just, they converge into a point. And so changing the geometry, is that something you've got to do at home in a workshop or what? No, you can take the little multi-tool out of your SWAT cage and you could do all of the adjustments on the trail. With a so multi-tool. With, a multi with a, just a, an ordinary multi-tool. So if you want to just do one little change and do a run to see what it feels like, that's totally easy. That's brilliant. And um, yeah, that moves us neatly onto the internal storage, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic thing. I mean, Specialized started it but so many people have, have sort of copied it. I think it's fantastic. I mean, if you open the door inside the storage for a tube or a pump, you also get this funny water bottle that you yeah. can use and it's fantastic. Yeah. And even better than that now is that uh, they've incorporated into their alloy bikes as well, which was, we were talking about earlier. Yeah. New model at 3250, that's got it in as well. Yeah, it's just a fantastic little bit of kit. Yeah, so th this, this is obviously the most expensive bike in test, but it, it comes with a lot, isn't it? Carbon frame, it's got the internal storage, it's got a really good setup with like GX, it's got the adjustable geometry, all the sizes. But yeah, now you, you, know, you can get that, that cheaper model. If, if this is out of your price range, there are other options. Yeah, the aluminium bike is 3,250 quid, and I reckon it's gonna ride 99.9% as like this bike. I mean, it's just, it's got everything that this bike's got, just not the camera frame. I mean, that's a really good point to sort of move on to the ride quality of this bike. Like how, how did it ride? Was it just a downhill smasher or was it more of an all-rounder? Uh, it was a bit of both. I mean, it could do all of those things. I mean, you could actually flat out on a rough descent and it was quick through the trees. It was like, it was good everywhere. I mean, like the white, it was good in a lot of different conditions. Mm. I think one of the things that surprised us the most, because we kind of expected it to be a really capable descender, was that it was actually really good at climbing. Perhaps even the best bike here for climbing? Yeah, I would say it was, because I, when we're doing some climbing back-to-back -back testing and you're watching how the bikes react on the climbs, the Specialized was easily the smoothest climbing bike. Really uh, surprising for a bike 
that's capable like this. Mm. You don't normally get those, those things don't normally go hand in hand. I, th I remember when I rode it, there was a couple of points where I thought, okay, this bike's, you know, it feels like it's a little bit half asleep here, but when the trail's kind of quite mellow, it's maybe not as in its element as if it's like really steep, rowdy, gnarly trails. It's, that's where it really feels like it comes alive. Oh yeah, once it starts getting rough, that's when it comes into its own. So we rated this a 10, didn't we? And, and I know it was the kind of bike we all wanted to take home from this test. Yeah. What was your kind of uh, summing up of this? I think what it is, you've got all of these options. You've got adjustable lace, you've got geometry adjust, but at the end of the day, this bike, you can just ride it stock and it's still an amazing bike. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the test. That was the shop bought models. Now go and watch the direct sales bikes video and hopefully we'll be able to bring you another one of these tests in less than two years time. <laughs>